you for coming out. We know, we know it's a busy season for everybody, so um, it's uh, awesome to have this big, good crowd come out this afternoon. So um, we're going to share my screen, and we will get started. Okay, can everybody see the title slide correctly? Okay, perfect. So like I said, welcome everybody. Um, this is a presentation that um, the uh, Critiquing Awards Committee wanted to do um, this year to kind of prepare everybody to for the upcoming se season, for uh, award season that's coming up. Um, so we've got some uh, great representatives from several institutions that are going to um, help uh, give a little insight into their experiences with the CNA program, how they submit items. Uh, we're not giving away all the trade secrets because that would be, you know, counterintuitive to our motives, but um, we're going to at least do some really good things to kind of help um, understand the process a little bit better um, and just really for the whole process, make it a little easier. There we go. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is our uh, fabulous group uh, of people on, on the dock today. Uh, we have three institutions kind of represented. Um, so first we have uh, University of Florida IFAS Pi Center. Um, so it's Sydney Honeycutt, who's the media coordinator there, and Ashley McLeod Morin, who is the Associate Director of Strategic Communications. So thankful to have them on the call today. Um, also hailing from the great state of Florida, we have University of Florida IFAS Communications. Um, so we have Loris Medeiros, who is the Public Relations Manager, and Tori Moore, who is Marketing Communication Specialist. So uh, I'm very thankful for um, these four ladies agreeing to help me with this presentation. I am Justin Miller, Communication and Marketing Specialist at Alabama Extension. Uh, so together, hopefully we have some great information for y'all today. And I do believe I'm going to turn it over to Sydney. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today. I'll just start off with a brief overview of the ACE Critique and Awards program, also known as the CNA Awards. So the CNA program allows ACE members to submit their work to be critiqued by professional judges. Winners are recognized each year at the ACE conference during an award ceremony, and they're also featured on the ACE website and receive a certificate. All kinds of projects can be submitted, the only requirement is that ent entries must be produced for a public sector organization during the calendar year. Um, judges are professionals with expertise in each CNA category, and they evaluate entries based on criteria established by ACE. And then there's a gold, silver, and bronze winner that is selected for each class. And then all gold winners in a category are judged against, against each other to select the Outstanding Professional Skill Award for that category. Even if an entry doesn't win an award, you'll still receive critiques. So that makes it a really good opportunity to gain outside feedback on communication products. We can go ahead and go to the next slide. So there are currently 11 categories that products can be entered into. And you can only enter a product once within a category, but you can enter in multiple categories if a project qualifies. So for example, a magazine could be entered in publishing, a story from the magazine could be entered in writing and the cover could be entered in graphic design. Um, each entry has to be submitted separately along with uh, the entry fees for that entry. So we'll go ahead and transition to the next slide and Ashley McLeod Moore and we'll talk a little bit about the funding process. Thank you so much, Sydney. And thanks everyone for, for joining us this afternoon. I'm excited that all of you want to learn more about the CNA process and hopefully we'll um, see some submissions from all of you this year as well. Um, so like Sydney mentioned, each submission um, does have a, an entry fee and the entry fees can be found on the ACE website under the CNA program. Um, each submission may look a little bit different depending on the size of your team and the type of submission in that category. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about securing funds um, in case that's been something 
that um, may have deterred um, entries in the past. And so one thing that we, we all agree that's really important whenever it comes to securing funding is to make sure to talk to your administration early. And so um, you might've saw submissions are due, I believe mid-February. Right now is, is a great time to get some of those conversations started to talk with your administration about why the CNA program is important um, for not only your specific unit, but your entire institution. It, it recognizes your department as well as your whole university or institution. It's also a really great opportunity to judge your unit and institution against other institutions that are like-minded and similar. Um, it can often look really great to say, you know, compared to other land-grant institutions, this is how we rank. Um, also, whenever you're thinking about securing funding, it's also a really great idea to go ahead and contact the content authors or maybe uh, individuals outside of your specific unit team that you might have worked on a project with. They may have um, the opportunity to assess funds that maybe you don't have access to. Specifically, when we're thinking about projects that are related to grant projects, it's really important to contact those project leaders. Oftentimes, those grant projects have um, uh, entry fees or competition fees that are included in the budget that, that may be um, useful to you as well um, and may give you more opportunities to submit more awards um, in, in the contest. And so, again, all of these are things to think about early on in the process to go ahead and secure your funding now. Um, and so it's not something that you're rushing to whenever you're getting those, those entries put in. Next slide. And now I believe I'm going to turn it over to the, the UF IFAS team. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I really enjoyed this particular awards program. It really has a lot of um, great opportunities. What I love about it most is that you actually get some feedback at the end, which is very rare. So you get to see where you could have maybe, maybe made another opportunity or you should have gotten a higher award, perhaps if you had added a couple of little things. Um, it really gives you insight into other, other projects. Um, so work as a team. So this is basically um, the number one thing that we do here at UFI. But so you, we we kind of get together all of our departments and we talk about what are possible entries. And what ends up happening is you realize just how many entries you really can collaborate on. And that's really the number one. But the one thing that we always like to tell people is, you know what, pay close attention to that rubric. That rubric is going to really set up the framework for you. Also compile a complete list of projects before eliminating a project for consideration because sometimes you'll realize that, you know what, maybe this project might be better for this category. Our ADP, our Associate Vice, uh, Vice President, Chris Vivian, uh, she has us contribute to a spreadsheet which basically lists uh, the intended uh, category that we're gonna be submitting, the headline, uh, the contributors and the lead writer. We contribute that and then once she approves the idea, the lead person takes it away from there to compile assets and work on the narrative. But we always work together, especially if we have more than one person on that project. Next slide, please. So don't feel like you have to limit yourself. Um, here's what's interesting about this. You know, start paying attention to the rubric, rubric and look at it more than once. And here's why. Um, you'd be surprised how we tend to look at the rubric at first. And then once you start considering a project or, or a particular item, um, you start to realize that, well, you know what, this could really do well in another category. Or maybe if I brought in the graphics team because they happen to do an infographic related to this, then we can possibly put it into another category. So when you start to look at that rubric, really pay attention to that. For example, um, that Tegu piece that you see there, um, it actually was a press release that started out. And then as we realized that I had actually made um, some infographics as well as additional invasive species uh, press releases, I was able to actually um, also submit it into uh, basically a campaign. And that was the gold winner. So as you can see, there's, there's different ways to really look at it, be really analytical about it, um, take a step back, and more than anything, make sure that while you're writing the narrative, that you're keeping a close eye on that rubric. Try to keep it nice and tight. Next slide. So um, for this next section, um, just happened, we didn't even plan it this way, but the people that the institutions that are represented on the call today really kind of represent a good breakdown of 
different size yeah. departments. And so uh, for this next section, we're going to go through and kind of each institution is going to talk about how they kind of gather uh, information, they write their entries, and they submit them. So as you see, um, IFAS is a example of a large department. They have 44 staff members. Um, very nice, nice thing to have. Um, us here at Alabama Extension, we have a good sized unit. We have a medium sized unit uh, with 16 staff members. And then the Pi Center is an example of a smaller department with four staff members. Um, so it's it's a good thing to kind of get some different perspectives going from here. Thank you, Justin. So, oh, I was gonna say, no, Lourdes no. and I are gonna tag team this. I'm gonna kick us off and then we're gonna take turns answering these questions. So again, we're gonna give you our perspective of what our process looks like as a larger institution. So who is responsible for gathering the information and writing your entries. So I was telling the team here, I joke, it's kind of like every man and woman for himself. We start with that big spreadsheet where we put in all of our ideas of all the things we might want to submit. And that is constantly edited and it's shared with all of you at FIFAS Communications over maybe weeks where we decide, okay, what are we submitting? What is it going to include? And who's the person pressing the button submit once they have gathered all the materials, right? So if it's a campaign, you know, we're reaching out to four of our different teams to gather those materials. It's a pretty large effort. So that list is built. We all do that independently and our AVP um, comes in and approves it. So what elements and assets do we include? Okay, so this is where I like to say more is best. And here's why. Um, so include metrics, samples, snapshots of social media posts that got a lot of great engagement, links to videos and news releases and placements, provide numbers. Those metrics say a lot. Um, the other thing that we like to do is, um, you know, if you have a press release, submit the press release. Um, if you submit, um, you know, a, a writing sample, obviously provide the writing sample and where it appeared. Um, like again, it's it's always good to give the the um, the judge a really good round picture, a global picture of what you did, what the effort was, and then of course the outcome. The outcome is very important. You want to show why it was successful, and at the end of the day, that's what's going to give you that gold. Also, how do you manage your entries and how are they organized? So start with answering the question. Why is this a vital solution to a problem? Or why are these important insights? That's always my favorite. Um, is this a universal solution to a problem? Can the need be demonstrated? Um, keep it compelling. You know, remember, you're, you're asking judges to read this. So you want to make sure that we're, while they're reading, they're kind of like at the edge of their seats, right? Collect assets, video links, infographics, photos, like I said earlier, and, and place it all in an order. Um, think of it in terms of, you know, use that rubric as a framework and then use those metrics across um, the media to kind of give that conclusion, both with the news coverage and the placements and answer why it was successful. That is what, that's all what it boils down to. And the last question, who submits your entry? So you can see in the screenshot here at the far end, that last question on that spreadsheet is for major group projects, who is submitting? <laughs> and that is the one person that's job is to go collect it all and compile it in a nice pretty document. I do it in like a, um, a OneDrive Word doc and then I send it to the rest of the team so they can have eyes on it, make sure it all looks good, edit anything they need, but then I'm responsible for copying and pasting that into the form and pressing submit or whomever's name is listed there, but it's one person um, for each entry and it's different for each entry. I think that's it for our process. So um, for Alabama Extension, we have a slightly similar, slightly different process than IFAS. Um, so when you're responsible for gathering information, that's kind of um, a little bit of a team effort initially. Uh, we also have that team meeting, um, usually sometime in November, maybe early December, where we just sit down at the conference room table for a few hours and and we spout off ideas uh, of, of projects we worked over the last uh, year. I don't know about y'all, but I have trouble. I have trouble remembering what I worked on this past year, and so it seems like my colleagues help me kind of work that out, and vice versa for them. Uh, so it, that's a great moment for us to sit down and kind of start sorting out what we think, coming up with that final list of things that we really do want to submit, um, and then from there, we kind of divide out 
pick a person who was responsible for that project mainly. Um, so if it was a design project, that designer is going to kind of take the initial lead to start gathering um, the basic information. Um, so any of the any of the um, elements that were included, like if it was a design, you know, original sketches, um, like for for this graphic that you see here, um, this was for an article that that won the gold. But for the graphic, we included that um, you know the inspiration for this was the album cover of Toto's Africa record, and so you can kind of see the record in there. So those type of elements that. I wouldn't necessarily know because I didn't design it, but a designer would, they kind of start gathering those. And when we switch it off is because some of the people are not as comfortable writing the actual entry. So we often get people a basic and then there is a, another group of us that start writing and kind of, I guess you say, fluffing up the entry, like really expanding on the storyline of what the entry says and really making sure that we're telling the story that we want to tell. Um, so that's a little slightly different. Um, the elements and the assets that we include, that kind of goes to um, the person who's kind of over the project is going to give a lot of the assets that we have. But then I think of other aspects of, um, I have to remind myself that a judge isn't only going to know what I give them. Um, they're not going to know that, you know, this this project had a week and a half deadline. And, you know, we, you know, this piece was designed on a sinking ship in the middle of sea during a hurricane. You know, those type of things, they're not going to know that. So I almost say like a judge is almost a little forgiving if they're like, well, I would have done this, but, you know, this person was fighting off an alien invasion while they were doing it. So sure, I'll give them a little pass there. So you have to make sure that all of those elements that are kind of hidden behind the scenes that may not even necessarily directly relate to the project, kind of how it influenced your project. So really pay attention. We pay attention to what influences and what um, the inspiration and kind of how for that project goes. Um for managing our entries, we have on our server system that our entire team has access to, we have a series of a folder for ACE entries, and then we uh, get uh, do subfolders for um, each year, and then each under that year, each project has its own folder. So this is a place that no matter if several people are working on the same entry, um, you can kind of go in and start putting your assets without having to just send it over email or whatever. So that's a really easy way for us to do it um, and, and organize our entries. And it also allows us to then, after we kind of have all of our submissions into at least the initial first draft, um, there are usually two people on our staff, uh, myself and Glenda Freeman um, and a few others occasionally that will then go through and edit every entry, um, making sure that it's written the way we want it to kind of speak, um, that making sure all the assets are there and they're named properly. Um, and as we kind of sign off on those things, we mark it with a green dot. And then that gets tells us it's ready for submission. And here in the last few years, I have personally submitted all of our entries. So that is a lovely day and a half process for me uh, to submit those. But we kind of um, keep it down to a minimum so we can kind of have that one final check and seal of approval by one person. We make sure that all the assets are exactly the way they need to be uploaded and named um, because we don't want any disqualifications because we forgot to add something. So that's kind of how a little bit more tight of a process for us. Thanks, Justin. And for the Pi Center, I think that we all start off our process a little similar. We also gather our full outreach team. Um, as Justin mentioned, we have a fairly small outreach team um, here at the Pi Center, and we take a first stab at what were some projects that we think were really great over the past year? What categories do we think that they would best fit in? Um, are there some projects that might fit in multiple categories? Um, and we usually do that at the end of the year. I think it's a really great um, 
time of the year, things are kind of slowing down a little bit as we get closer to Christmas. We can all sit down, dedicate one of our outreach meetings to um, to to thinking about our CNA awards. And then once we come back from the holidays, we're ready to hit the ground running, pulling together some of the, those assets. And so once we determine some of those projects um, that we want to submit to the CNA awards, we assign a specific point person then to, to work on writing the application, pulling together those assets and elements. Um, and then uh, once we get all of those things pulled together and we get closer to the actual submission deadline, our director and our media coordinator, Sydney here, they will give a, a final look through of everything just so it also gives an extra set of eyes to all of our applications. And then that specific point person is the one responsible for actually submitting those, those projects um, those submissions. Um, and then whenever we're thinking about what elements and assets do you include in an entry, I think that it's really important to tell the story of your application. We're all really great storytellers. And so use that, those skills whenever you're putting together your CNA entry. And so um, your, your assets and your elements are really going to depend on, on the type of submission um, that you're looking at. Some are usually a little bit more obvious than others. And so I think that's also a really important reason to take a look at the, um, the specific application for the category that you're looking at early on because the, the assets and elements might be a little bit different. Um, but some key things that's really important to pull is the evaluation of that project or that entry, the analytics and the metrics. Um, and so we evaluate all of our projects in the Pi Center. And so it's really easy whenever we get to this part of the application that we can pull what were those short and long-term outcomes um, we don't want to forget about that kind of thing. Um, but then you also want to make sure that you're revisiting the beginning of your project. What problem were you even attempting to solve? What target audience were you hoping to address? Um, and making sure that um, that you're not forgetting the, the early part of the process as well. And this is kind of a little personal tip that I do. But um, I think that Justin was the one that mentioned, you know, sometimes it's hard to think about, like, gosh, what did we even do that we finished up in January of this year? That feels so long ago at this point. And so whenever I finish a project and I think like, wow, this was really good. This would be a really great entry to X category. Um, I just keep a sticky note on, on my wall next to my desk. Um, and there have been years that I revisit those sticky notes by the time we're submitting projects. And I'm like, gosh, I already forgot about that project. I forgot that that was in this year. And so that's just a personal reminder to me that I can then bring to that, um, that large team meeting. And then um, now Sydney is going to finish this slide up with some extra tips. Thank you, Ashley. So kind of similar to IFIS Communications, we also use a spreadsheet for managing our entries. Um, we outline the entry itself, what category and class we want to submit it in, and then who the point person is <clears throat> that will be responsible for writing um, the entry and gathering the assets and kind of compiling everything together. Uh, we keep everything in teams so that we all have access to it. Uh, we have a, we keep a Word document template um, of just kind of the general submission form that uh, we build off of. And then we also make a folder for each of our entries where we drop the assets and the submission um, so that everyone can look at it. So even though one person is responsible, at least one other person um, will look over each entry before they get submitted. And when we submit the entries, um, we usually have one or two people that are responsible for submitting. Um, and they'll go back and make note of that in the spreadsheet whenever an entry has been submitted so that we don't duplicate our efforts. Um, so that by the end of the deadline, we can go in and see um, and make sure that everything has been submitted and contact the point people um, for those entries if we need to. Okay, so in theory now you have not just decided what you're going to submit, you've wrangled all the pieces, you've submitted it, and now you've won, right? So you go hopefully to ACE and you celebrate. And now I want to talk about how important it is to close the loop. Like any important or large marketing or PR campaign, you want to report on your success, right? So don't forget to do that for your ACE awards too, right? Uh, there's lots of ideas on how you can do this. And we all talked about how we might celebrate our successes differently, but writing an email to share with the institution about the projects that won, um, not just the communications team members that were on them, but mention the faculty members as as well too. Um, and even bonus points, this can come from some level of leadership sending out this announcement. 
um, writing a news release, um, posting pictures to social media, especially, you know, an ACE event recap, perhaps something like that. Um, if you have an intranet or something like that, that's a great home for those as well, or on teams. Um, finding a way to celebrate as a team, whether that's just lunch or reception, we have team members all across the state. So sometimes we do little virtual gatherings like that. Um, and the biggest piece is not just about bragging on the work, but this helps build buy-in for future submissions. So whether that be funding, um, support attending the conference, um, that's that's the huge piece of this is it kind of closes the loop to see all that money we spent. Look, we won and, and what it means too. Um, so in our email announcing it. And when we talk about it, we explain what this award means and kind of who we were up against, who was the competition. And the answer to that is really important. What was mentioned earlier, it's being compared against like-minded or similar institutions around the country. All right. So um, as it was mentioned earlier, there is uh, above gold, silver, and bronze, there um, is an outstanding professional skill um, award. And that is given, um, obviously, I think there's 11 categories. So technically, there's a possible 11. Sometimes they're not awarded every year. Uh, but this is an opportunity where um, gold winning entries from every class are kind of judged against each other, the other gold uh, from that from that category. So think of this as like the best in show within specific categories, you know, graphic design, social media, those things. So it's kind of the best of the best, depending on what it is. Um, so this is obviously a very prestigious award and it, it, it's something that's uh, really special to teams to get. And so at the ACE conference, um, you'll get an email from, from saying that you're, uh, you and your team can create a video to kind of highlight that project. So people at ACE can kind of see you know, the hard work you put into it and what the project was. Um, so at Alabama Extension, we've taken a humorous approach of, uh, often to these videos. Um, and for us, that just, it leaves us, it's an opportunity to have fun with each other as a team, um, to get out of the office and be a little silly and just have a full, you know, full day or an afternoon where we're not thinking about just the everyday type of work. It's something a little different. Um, and also one of my coworkers pointed out often there's a lot of times that the really creative projects, we don't get a lot of those. Um, you know, there's only so many ways that, you know, soul testing can be made into a creative type of, of product. So this kind of gives us a creative outlet to kind of expand those. And we've often found that if you're having a little fun with video, then you it kind of inspires and kind of reignites your creativity to then be put into your other projects. It kind of gets you a little bit of a, a get going for creativity. Um, so I did want to show um, an older one of our videos just to give you an idea of what um, those look like. So get my screen sharing again. Okay, can everybody see the video screen? Yes. Okay, we're going to hope that the sound comes through. Uh, so this was for um, our Farming Basics online course, um, which is a, a course that people can come in. And it's a free, free of charge. People could just kind of a little bit learn a little bit about farming from every different aspect of farming. And so um, I don't know if anybody else uh, was a kid in the 90s who woke up to the television with the 40 greatest love songs soundtrack commercial playing in the background, you know, when the TV was on at 2 a.m. Um, this, that was our inspiration for this video. So hope you enjoy. Cause I'm your Imagine learning the basics of farming from the greatest specialists of our time. in a once-in-a-lifetime collection. Somewhere 
Alabama Extension presents the Farming Basics online course. Four hours of learning pleasure on all our favorite farming topics. Have I told you lately that I love you? Farm management, pesticide safety, food safety, crop production, pest management. Get the Farming Basics online course for less than the price of a Ginsu knife set. But wait, call now and get four more courses from Alabama Extension. That's right. Act now and get all five courses for the price of one. Review all these courses. If you are not completely satisfied, too bad. All sales are final. Farming Basics is not sold in stores. Don't wait. So remember, for less than the price of a Ginsu knife set, get all five online courses. Call 1-800-653-SOIL to order the Farming Basics online course for this low price, plus shipping and handling. Send a check or money order. Operators are standing by. That's right, 1-800-999-PEST. Call now. So anyway, that's extremely ridiculous, but it was a lot of fun to do. Um, and I think one of the most fun things after we watched it for a while, we think of how many Easter egg hidden things can we put in there? Like, how many of you noticed that the number kept changing? You know, those type of things. Like, that's one of those fun things to do. Uh, so it, it overall, it was just, those are just really fun to do. Um, obviously, not every project can be done in, in a manner like that to where um, it's, you know, it, some things are very serious and it needs to be taken serious. But for those projects that you can do for an outstanding professional skill, if you have the opportunity, have some fun with it. Um, and those are a, those are a lot of fun overall. All right, so that comes to the end of the presentation. Uh, I think we've got about 30 minutes left, a little less than 30 minutes, uh, but we've, our, all of our emails are up there. As you can see, I'll leave this up for a little bit in case you want to take a picture or do those, uh, but we kind of open the floor for questions uh, from anybody. We have one question in the chat I can read. Um, our group has submitted an undergraduate research journal from our ag college in the publishing technical communication category off of the judge's comment that it is too technical. Is there a more appropriate category for academic journals? Well, all righty then. Um, I, we, we have not ever entered that category. So I, I couldn't tell you, we don't, we don't do a lot of what I guess is considered technical writing. Um, since we're purely extension side of things. Um, I don't really know what would be more technical than technical writing, to be quite honest. Uh, anybody else got any thoughts on that? Not me. I've never submitted anything. What about you, Lourdes, like that? No, but my suggestion would be um, is contacting ACE and asking to see if we could get more information. I did that one time with um, with a critique only because it had to do with a, um, a marketing plan that I did, and it was really good information, but it, it, at some point I couldn't quite get the gist of what I needed to do to make it better. So I called and they contacted me back and I was explained a little more by the judge, um, basically what I could have done later. And this was a, this was a different category, obviously, but um, that's what I would do. I would definitely contact back and, and get some insight in terms of, you know, how can I make this better? I may have a suggestion. Um, I was on the uh, page that shows the different categories. Um, there is a category for publishing four with annual and special reports, and it talks about experiment station and extension service reports. And typically, 
our experiment station reports are a reflection of our research. That may be a better category. I'm not sure, but you may want to look into that one as an alternative. Um, maybe that's a better fit because I know we've entered our research report, which um, a lot of times is very scientific in nature. Um, and we've gotten some feedback. Um, so maybe it's a different category, but that's just a suggestion for now. I'll just mention, I don't think we get a lot of academic journal type submissions. So that's probably not something that the judges are are used to looking at. So it probably does look very different than what some of the other submissions that they may, may be um, critiquing look like. Very good points. Um, any other questions? Group. It looks like we covered it all. It looks like there's uh, everybody. So that means everybody's going to submit just lots and lots of mm -hmm. entries this year, right? Um, well, um, if no one has any other questions, um, like I said, feel free. I'm sure anybody, like I said, our emails are up there, but you can find our emails somewhere else if you do think of questions later. Um, one last thing, anybody, anything else for the good of the group? I have a question um, sure. and just thinking about this, it's very helpful. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing this. It's really good. Um, uh, this is Anne with Iowa State University uh, College of Ag and Life Sciences. We have a very small group and uh, as we're learning and submitting and having a little more success and wanting to move, you know, continue to improve, um, Thinking about even the, uh, you know, the different assets and providing more information. Um, and it just prompted me to think, that, you know, thinking about an annual report, uh, like if we did an annual report, I feel like it is so much better than anything that had been done previously. <clears throat> um, maybe a where it started out would be an asset that would be part of the package to show that. Um, any thoughts on that? I mean, that would be from, you know, from a previous year. So Is that the, fair to consider as part of a I, package? I don't, I can't speak directly to an annual report, but I know that we've had a little bit of experience um, submitting things that were improvements from previous years. And so specifically one thing that I'm thinking about are websites. Um, and so I know that um, regularly we're all updating web content, websites, and uh, we have taken, and knowing that we are gonna submit it in that way, we've taken screenshots of what the website looks like previously. Once we were doing website changes, um, we're submitting in the website category. Um, and, and we'll show some of those before and after pictures. Um, so I know that that's a little bit different than, than specifically what you're talking about. And, and I think that that's also part of the, the rules. I don't have it pulled up to reference, but um, I know if you're submitting something that you've submitted in the past, um, and that would be a, a very specific project, it needs to be, um, you, know, you need to be able to talk about what uh, significant improvements you've made on that specific projects for why you're you're resubmitting it but I don't know if any of the my other fellow panelists have have other experiences so let me make sure I understand your question so you're saying that something that was a pre-done product in the past and y'all have redone it redesigned it it looks so much better and you want to submit it again is that what you're asking here or maybe we never submitted it in the past, but want to show, you know, like where we've come from. Yes, um, we we have done that uh, before with, um, is, I think it actually was an annual report. Um, we we showed the, to, to really show the difference. And also if you're going to compete in the editing category, oftentimes that will help there as well. Uh, just to show this is what it once was and this is what we took it to. Um, so certainly as an example, I think that, I think that's a strong 
element of a of an entry to kind of show this is where we were, this is where we are now. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? All righty. Well, um, thank y'all for coming today. Um, if y'all, if we can ever be of any help, please uh, let any of us know. We will be happy to do it. Thank you, Justin and team for um, organizing this today. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you.